Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Linda and this is my husband Jason and today we got a new kitchen gadget and we're excited to share it with you. This is the Anova sous vide machine. So for those who don't know about sous vide, yes. okay, essentially what it is, it's you're cooking a protein, typically. Or vegetable. Yeah, it's or vegetable. vegetable. And on the side here, there's mm. vegetables. And what it does is that you're cooking it in a water bath at a controlled temperature for a certain amount of time. So the normal issue and why this is a thing is that when you're cooking, let's just use steak as mm -hmm. the example, uh, you can't control the exact temperature without having a thermometer and then constantly managing the heat. So what you can do is put this into a plastic container, preferably BPA free, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want to leach those chemicals into anybody. And what you're going to do is put it into the water bath and this controls the water temperature. So it's going to cook your food to a certain temp. So if you want it medium rare, it will cook it up to medium rare and then that's it. Okay. So no more overcooked chicken, no more overcooked fish. Yeah, seafood I think is the biggest one here because I feel like a lot of people and chicken were chicken. super excited to do chicken, especially chicken breast because it is such a plain, Awful. boring. I don't cooked. like chicken and I think the biggest reason everyone just says I haven't had good chicken, so good chicken will hopefully come with this. Yeah, so we're hoping it would create more tenderness, uh, more flavor, more juices because it's keeping all those cooking juices inside that bag mm -hmm. as it cooks okay and then what you typically do with most proteins let's say you had a steak and you were cooking it in the sous vide once you're done it's going to be very kind of ugly i think what is the word when it yeah. comes out it doesn't have those nice searing marks so you can either finish in a pan in the oven um on a grill but you want it to be hot and fast because it's already cooked to the exact temperature you just want to finish it some people even use blow torches Maybe one day I'll convince Linda to give me a blowtorch. By blowtorch, it'll be a blowtorch. Okay. Yeah, like a kitchen safe. Little flamethrower thing. Let's unbox it because everybody wants to see intro. I'm really excited. So full disclosure, this unit here we picked up on Facebook Marketplace. Someone was selling it. They had never used it. Still in the box. Still has all the plastic wrapping. Um, Jason did have them like plug it in to make sure that it was indeed working. Yeah. So we obviously got it secondhand. What does one of these go for? Yeah, you're looking, this is an older model. So if you bring it up again, there's much newer ones. Uh, they range from anywhere from, I'd say 130 Canadian dollars to upwards of three to $400. So this is, I would say the lower power one, but we are not cooking large pieces of meat typically. Yeah. And really all that means is, is it'll be quicker to heat up the water. So if you do like, I'm assuming, and we're going to totally practice and we'll yeah. fail forward with all of you, is if we put a kettle of hot water in the water, it'll help speed up the process a bit. Yeah. So it doesn't have to work as hard. So I think that'll mm -hmm. help if you don't get the super power, like thousand watt plus one, an 800 would be suffice for most people. Um, on the back of the box, uh, some of the features of this unit is it's got an adjustable clamp. So whether you're using like a sous vide vessel or a stock pot or something like that, you can adjust it. Uh, easy to use interface, makes enough for about eight people. So like you said, yeah, we're cooking size. for huge, huge amounts. Uh, connectivity, so it's got some Bluetooth features we're gonna test out, see how they work. Precision temperature control, which a cooking device I would assume has that. And then no flames or stoves needed. Yeah. Unless you're using a blowtorch to finish your steak. So Nova has a app to use, which I'm sure we'll throw some screenshots of that up on uh, sometime in this, mm -hmm. of us just kind of scrolling through it. So what's cool about that is let's say you want to do shrimp, they have recipes on there, so you can find the recipe first, and then you can also tells you what temperature and for how long. Because for us, this is our first time, so we really don't know a lot. Yeah, we'll be doing a lot of interesting, I'm sure. Yeah. All right, let's open it up. First one's with quick, quick guide, basic how to turn it on, how to operate your machine, what all the buttons do, all the parts. Yeah, this is a very popular one, so you'll see a lot of this brand on most 
sous vide channels. Look at that. That's not a very deep pot. I think we're going to be able to get started right away. Yeah, I think we're going to be using the Instapot uh, container as the first pot we use, and then we might look at upgrading. Get it so, uh, the inside has some basic times and temperatures, which is nice to be able to have that right off the bat, ready to go. Um, Jason obviously took this off when he tested it to make sure that it works. And you need to keep it all attached. Nothing else in that box. It still has like the cover, which we're gonna leave on forever. I don't know if you guys do that. My mom's like notorious for this. She never takes off the screen cover. And we have like a smart uh, doorbell that has a screen cover over the camera. And we've been here for what, three, four months now? We haven't taken it off and we, we won't. <laughs> It's like, a, it's like a screen protector for free. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna leave that one on, we're gonna leave this one on. And yeah, this is a really nice unit. It's it's a hefty unit, it's not too big. Um, this obviously comes off. This is what you would use to mount it to the side of the pot that you intend to be using. Mm -hmm. um, it's really nice. It, that, it feels solid. Yeah. Like this ain't gonna break. It's really nice. Yeah. So a couple of features, Linda's playing with the wheel right away. That's what you can manually adjust the temperature if you want. So let's say you're cooking something and you're like, oh, wrong temperature, you wanna raise it or lower it. You can do that. You don't need the app to run this machine unlike some other ones. This one you can do manually right on the screen and use that mm. thing to adjust it. Um, that roller feels nice. It has a maximum minimum for your water filling. So I don't know if you can see that on the camera, maximum, minimum. So obviously above where the device brings in water. Yeah to heat it up. So what it will circulate and heat water. It's got a decent cord. I would like it longer, but it is what it is. We have a lot of plugs. Yeah. So we'll be okay. But yeah, it is, we might be looking at a two and a half, three foot cord. Yeah. Without reading any instructions to this thing, yep. I'm assuming it's just a simple twist and pull, and oh. that's how you clean the unit. Okay. So I'm assuming, cause this element heats up, you're gonna get some calcium buildup. All right, so we got a pot. Uh, we're not sure if this one's going to be deep enough. This is just the biggest one we've had. We've never, we've never had a need for a bigger pot. Uh, like Jason mentioned, we're going to use the Instapot. Um, I just want to check and see. So that clamps to the side. When you're cooking, because it never actually gets really, really hot, you don't have to worry about like where you're putting this. You can just put it just on the counter or on a cutting board on the counter. So this actually would work. Yeah, I don't know if it's super ideal because then half of the like no and everything room. is in it. There's no room to put your stuff either. So uh, good news is if this is all you have, it will work. You'll definitely be able to use this. We are going to... This will be more ideal. This is the Instapot insert that's in your Instapot cooker. Which is also one of my all-time favorite devices. Pop that on. The yeah. rice sits in there like that. This is probably a perfect size for feeding us because um, it'd be tons tons of space. So just clamps on there. It's very sturdy. So I think the next thing we're going to do is start cooking. We're going to make some shrimp for dinner tonight. What you want is enough room between the top and the water. So when you put whatever you're cooking inside, the displacement doesn't overflow. You can hear and see the water starting to displace in there. So it's doing its thing. So this says 130. That's the temperature that it's going to. This is current temperature. So we're only a degree off. So the heating the water before putting this in helped us get a leg up on the right cooking temperature. Being that it's already almost a temperature, we should get the shrimp ready. Now, there are two ways to do it. One, if you have a vacuum seal machine, you can vacuum seal whatever it is you're sous vide in, in there. Um, we don't. It's not a kitchen tool that we would get much use out of, so we're not going to buy one. We're going to use the Ziploc method, and we'll show you how to do that and get a good seal on it. So we got the shrimp, we got the lemon. I chopped up and like smashed some garlic, so we'll put those in there. Put a tiny bit of olive oil. This is gonna help the um, shrimp from sticking too much together. What? What's a tiny bit? What would you say? Um, a drizzle. Yeah. 
extra We're gonna put butter as well because I think the flavoring will be better with butter. I agree. But I right now we're gonna put in just squares of butter. So lay this a little bit more flat so that the shrimp have room. And then like we still want to make it as evenly cooked as possible. Yeah. And then we're just gonna slip three butter pieces in. Just really thin cut. So you got garlic, some butter. Do we want a little ginger? Uh, we could put a slice of ginger just to see how that is. Okay. Cutting that on the counter. Hey, like a chef. So now it is important that we remove the water from the bag. So I'm just going to close it. The water from the bag? We want to make sure <laughs> no water gets in, but we got to close the bag. We got to remove as much of the air there from here as we can. So you can take out the air in the water here, but I find that's a little cramp to do that. And we want you guys to be able to see the process. So we're just gonna use a cold uh, thing of water here. So tub filled with water, what happens is that when you push this into the water, it pushes all of the air out and then you get it right down to the edge, and then a helpful hand sealing it off. So then when you take it out, it's pretty much vacuum sealed. Yep. And I'm just gonna like separate that out a little bit more. And then we are good to put this into our tub. Yeah, you don't want it to lay on the bottom. You want the water to circulate mm -hmm. around the food. All right, so 30 minutes have elapsed. We're gonna turn it off. And then we pull it out. So they went in as uncooked shrimp and they're nice and rosy pink now. Yeah. Uh, obviously the butter is melted. We see the chunks of the lemon, the garlic, the Show ginger. Looks pretty juicy in there. Pour it in. And I'm just gonna pour it into the bowl. They feel good. They feel bouncy. They do. They look real bouncy. Um, there's only one or two I think that are super curled up, but the other ones look good. Yeah, like you know when you overcook a shrimp and it kind of like turns into a, like a hard sea. How did that taste? <clears throat> that is really good like okay so it doesn't taste like a typical shrimp that you'd make at home when you like pan fry it no um, it has a different consistency because it is cooked differently um it's, it's snappy yeah it's juicy it tastes fresh like it tastes super fresh, fresh, fresh. and these were frozen from like costco yeah you can't eat them all. Just try and stop me. I'm not blown away because I knew that was going to be good. Oh, yeah. But it was, in my mind, it's an easy process. We were able yeah. to, while it was cooking, we were able to do the vegetables, do the rice. And without, without dirty in dishes, because this is just boiling water, so we don't, like, we don't need to wash this. No. Uh, you toss the Ziploc bag, or should you choose to, you can wash it and reuse it uh, as long as the bag keeps, maintains its integrity. But like no dishes other than what we're going to eat out of. Mm -hmm. It oh. doesn't take up much counter space. It kind of sits off to the side and does its thing. And technically to cook it to, I'm, I'm going to say the word perfection, mm -hmm. but pretty darn close to perfect. There is no overcooked ones. There's no mushy ones so far that we've had. Yep. Um, they've been snappy, flavorful, and yeah, I'm excited to put them in a meal. All right, we are back for day two of sous vide food and today 
the ultimate test, we are going to sous vide steaks. What kind of steaks are these, babe? Uh, they're like a sirloin steak, strip steak. And they're grass fed from a local friend of mine who has some cattle. So this has a very nice taste uh, comparative to your standard um, grocery store. Awesome. I think the ultimate test, if you're willing to put a steak in the sous vide, you're really wow. putting it to the test. So what do we got? One, 29, 29 for one hour. For one hour. It's going to give us a medium rare. That's how I like it. For a strip steak. All right. Let's put this thing, both of these things, in a bag. So because we are making these steak in line with our meal prep, we're not just cooking a steak for funsies. We are going to do one in more like a stir fry style shish kebab because uh, it's going to be chopped up, put into a stir fry. And then the other one we're going to do salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And that'll be it. So we're going to put them in two separate bags for two separate flavored steaks. Alright, so that's the plain steak. Alright, so push the air out. Alright, we've got those steaks underwater. Because the steaks have to be in there for a little longer than the shrimp, um, Jason is going to saran wrap over the top of the pot just to make sure that we don't lose too much water from like evaporation. So we're gonna let these hang out, what'd you say, 70 minutes? So just one hour, yeah, but we have an appointment to do uh, with a client. Yes, we have a client appointment to do here at six. So we're gonna go for 70 minutes because you can't overcook it. So if you have to leave it in there longer by, you know, within an hour, yeah. apparently it doesn't matter. You would have to go for like four hours to like make it structurally degrade. Yes, so it does, it's not that it over, the food cannot overcook in a sous vide, mm -hmm. but the integrity of the protein can basically just fall apart because it becomes too tender, yeah. too tender to eat. So an hour and a little bit, or at least till our appointment is done, and then we'll be back in a bit to see these steaks and then finish them off on the grill. So, see you in a bit. All right, so here are the sous vide steaks. They smell amazing. They look a little bit gray, but this is normal so we ensure that we're going to get a good sear because water is the enemy of searing so what we're going to do is let this kind of blot off i'm going to start the barbecue so we're going to use this big cast iron pan put a bit of butter and then we're going to sear them on here on the barbecue that way we don't smoke in the entire house when we do this you can use a torch as well, if you have a blowtorch, this works great. On the grill, uh, you can use a cast iron pan in your house. If you have a bigger one with higher edges, it's a great option, but I'm gonna do with butter and cast iron to give it its crust. So Jason is outside finishing off the steaks on a cast iron on the barbecue, and I'm back inside where it's warm. But I wanna talk about the ease of this appliance in terms of like the cleaning essentially because it's a water bath it just comes apart we've got it here i uh, basically this is the holder the outside shell with which just twists off this is the actual unit and element but the time it takes to clean up after, there's no scrubbing dishes, 
the metal bowl that we used as the tub, it's just water. So you just rinse it out, assuming nothing leaked or spilt, um, which ideally wouldn't happen anyway. But the maintenance in terms of cleanup is so, so easy. So full disclosure, I don't eat <laughs> red meat like ever. So we're going to give this a go. Cheers. It's a good steak. Mm -hmm. Super flavorful. Mm -hmm. Juicy. Mm -hmm. Evenly cooked all the way through. A little bit of the thinner, the steak wasn't perfectly Obviously you've seen it. It wasn't perfectly level. So when I was searing on the pan, some pieces started to get cooked a little bit more based on that sear. But majority of what was I consider a normal cut of steak was perfectly done all the way through. Nice medium rare. That's what we wanted. All right, we are here with our last sous vide experiment of this video, and we are doing chicken breast. Personally, I'm not convinced that there is anything that is going to make chicken breast good. I maybe never had good chicken breast. I just always find that it's overcooked, super dry, and more or less flavorless unless you like coat it in a good sauce. So we're going to do two chicken breast styles. We're going to do one with just chicken and, and seasonings, and then Jason is going to bake and wrap the other ones. Jason's over here figuring out the temperatures and times. We got a new vessel to do our sous vide in, and we're going to see if we can make chicken breast taste good. Do you think we should add more spices in here? Or like um, some lemon maybe? No, I think it'll be fine. Two hours later, let's check on that chicken. It smells like... It smells really good. I can't quite... So there's the regular chicken, the bacon wrap chicken. 
it smells amazing. It almost smells like a chicken casserole, kind of, sort of, which would make sense. Uh, it's not the most appetizing looking at the moment. All right, so we've got the chicken. We just basically pan seared it to give it like a crust on the outside, a little bit of color, not too long. And now we're gonna cut it and taste it and see if it's better than regular. All right, so fully cooked. Uh, you can see, not like pink, because I'm not worried about that's absolutely cooked, it's been cooking forever but you can definitely tell that all the juices stayed in it. Mm -hmm. So I like that. I don't know. Let's give it a try. I'm excuse me. All right, we'll save some dishes. <laughs> I had no problems with that. I want a big fat juicy part. Okay, I'll take the other piece. Yeah. So juicy. Mm -hmm. It was like, Explosion of moisture for a traditionally super boring and dry and tough chicken. Still cooked, still flaky, but you can see the shine. I mean, wow, that's pretty good. Was that a flavor? I got goosebumps. That was really good. I think the bacon helped keep a lot of the seasoning contained mm -hmm. and maybe less floating around the bag. Yeah. But also the bacon probably took on some of that seasoning. Oh, for sure. And like the fat. Personally, I'm not a big baking fan. Yeah. You know that I don't. I'm, I'm one of the crazy ones. I don't really like baking. Um. So that part of it, like, eh? but the chicken, like that bacon, just like. Holds all the juice well, in. Let's try this. Let me take the chicken out of the oh. bacon. You eat the bacon, I eat the chicken. Oh, what a great relationship. I know, right? Yeah, that's some juicy chicken. Was it more flavorful than this? Mm. I don't know if I'd say more flavorful, but go back to this one. Definitely softer. So let's sum up our week. It's been about a week with the sous vide. So to wrap it up, we did the shrimp. 100% the best shrimp I've ever had. I don't know that we will ever eat shrimp any other way now that we've had it sous vide. And because we meal prep anyway, this idea of like prep it and set it and come back to it a couple hours later really works for our lifestyle. So absolutely amazing it was so good it's so easy i think it's a big thing you just throw it in a bag and go uh the next was the steak i'm gonna say can you sous vide steak yes do we still need to perfect the recipe absolutely as as someone who doesn't eat beef or pork a lot um i know that my palate isn't really refined in terms of what makes a good steak and what doesn't but having a steak that is maybe a little bit more on the rare side so that it can take on a little bit more heat in the searing process afterwards i think is what we need to tweak for the recipe uh third the chicken the chicken was amazing i'm i'm particularly not crazy about chicken breast i think it is a very boring bland dry meat but it, it, it definitely, the cooking process is different. So having a chicken sous vide is just so much better. It's so much juicier. It's so much more flavorful. We'll see how it holds up over the next couple days because that's where meal prep chicken really goes bad. So we'll see if we're able to maintain that integrity. And then the creme brulee, 
I know you guys only got to see pictures of it. Essentially, the process of just putting the ingredients in a jar, putting the jars in the sous vide bath, and then of course we did everything but the brulee part because we don't yet have a torch, but it's coming. That was amazing. We are actually going to invest in smaller jars. We only have a few, but getting a bunch of smaller jars so that we can make creme brulees for like a dinner party because it would be so easy. So that was four different, well, three different proteins, four different dishes that we were able to create with our sous vide. And to be honest, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. I absolutely recommend it. We can't wait to use it more in the future. So if you enjoyed this video, please go down below, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and let me know either your favorite sous vide recipe or if there's anything that we should try and post to our Instagram. So I'm excited. I'm so glad that you guys joined us on this experiment. I definitely don't add things to my kitchen without thought. So this was definitely a very well researched, a definitely thought out appliance because we would never otherwise just buy one unless we researched it, knew we were going to use it. But I can't wait to have you guys join me in the next video. See ya. Thank you.